My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. It's one thing to hear about a person and another thing to actually know them, to meet them, to deal with them. And perhaps many of you have had the experience as children of hearing about a new baby in the family, a new sibling. And maybe your mother told you, you know, you're going to have a little brother. A little brother is going to join our family. And so, you know, as children, we, we begin to think, well, where's this, where's this brother going to come from? And then mom shows us her belly and points to the baby inside. And as the months go by, the expectation grows and grows as we think about this person we're going to meet. This person who, in a sense, we already know, but we haven't met them yet. I remember, because I'm from a large family, whenever a new baby would arrive, there was all the expectation for when the child would be born, whether it would be a boy or a girl. And then that night when mom and dad would go to the hospital and we would wait by the phone to receive news uh, of the birth of the baby and whether it was a boy or a girl, we would have a big celebration in the house running around saying, it's a boy, it's a boy, or it's a girl, it's a girl. And then days later, we would be brought to the hospital to meet our new sibling. And I remember very clearly the expectation of that. I even remember kind of, kind of hurrying down the hall in the hospital, rounding the corner to the room, where my mother was, entering into that room and seeing the baby for the first time. Hearing the baby for the first time. Speaking to the baby, holding the baby. It was no longer a concept. It was no longer something simply that I knew about, but, but rather something that I had encountered and experienced and knew for myself. Maybe this is a little bit what it was like for the prophetess Anna, that mysterious figure who we read about in today's gospel from the gospel of Luke. There was a prophetess, also Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was well on in years. Her days of girlhood over. She had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old, and never left the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came by just at that moment and began to praise God, and she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. This ancient woman, this elderly figure who has spent her entire life waiting for something. She's waiting for this promised Messiah. She never left the temple serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She had been told by her faith, she had been told by all the prophets, that salvation would come to Israel, that the injustices that they were suffering would not be forever, that there would be a descendant of David who would come to redeem Israel. And she prayed for that. She looked forward to it. She knew about it. But today, in this special moment, in the presentation of our Lord in the temple, she no longer, she no longer knows simply about this Savior. She meets him face to face. She came by just at that moment and began to praise God. You can imagine her looking at Our Lady, looking at St. Joseph, staring down at the baby, 
and just bubbling up with joy. Maybe she wept for joy. And she spoke of the child to everyone who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. We can imagine her running around the temple portico, speaking hurriedly to the pilgrims, to those who went to worship in the temple, about the deliverance of Jerusalem. This baby is the one. Expectation, of course, Advent has been a time of expectation in which we recalled all of the prophecies of Isaiah that pointed towards the coming of the Savior. What can we glean from this gospel? Today is a day in which we can imitate Anna's joy, right? Anna, who has long awaited the coming of the Messiah, can now rejoice, just like Simeon. Simeon, who is also in this scene, another elderly man who has waited year in and year out from the t- in the temple, he can say, Nunc dimitis, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace, for my eyes have seen the Savior. The joy of these two people, the joy of these just ones who awaited patiently the coming of the Messiah and can now celebrate the fact that they know God so intimately, that they know God in this way. My eyes have seen the Savior. We should have this joy too because we, like Simeon and Anna, have been recipients of God's revelation, meaning we have been blessed with a new way of knowing God that was not known before Jesus Christ. With the coming of Jesus Christ, we now know God much more intimately because God has taken on human flesh. The second person of the Blessed Trinity has assumed a human nature and become one with us. He has become like us. And this is an incredible thing. We take this for granted, but think about it. Aristotle. Aristotle was a great philosopher. He was perhaps one of the people who thought more about God than anyone else. He thought, he philosophized, He meditated on the idea of God. He knew about God. He thought about God as a concept, the unmoved mover. Now, St. Thomas, who loved Aristotle and used a lot of Aristotle's arguments for his own work, he would be the first to say that that, that Aristotle was very limited in his knowledge of God. I think Thomas at one point says that I'm paraphrasing here, the little old lady in the pew, right, that Christian who's there in the corner of a church praying her rosary, she knows much more about God than Aristotle ever could with all of his books and philosophy and studying. Because that Christian has been given the gift of Jesus Christ the revelation of God on a whole new level, something that Aristotle never could have dreamed of, that God is one in three, that God is the relationship between the Father and the Son, and that the Son has become one of us. We have known him. We have seen him with our eyes. So often, Lord, you, Jesus, you tell us through the apostles, blessed are your ears, that hear what they hear. Blessed are your eyes that see what they see. Many a prophet of old would have longed to see what you see, longed to hear what you hear, but did not. Jesus, we, we, we recognize this, how blessed we are to have been born in the time of your coming, to have experienced the truth of your revelation, to be given the gift of faith. Let's ask Our mother Mary, who would have been there at that scene, who would have seen the joy of Anna and would have rejoiced with her. Mother Mary, help us to be more appreciative of our faith. Help us to be more grateful for the fact that we have come to know your son. Help us to also try to spread the good news because just like Aristotle, there are many people today who do not yet know God who do not yet know Jesus Christ, 
who have not had that personal encounter with the Savior. We have rounded that corner. We have seen the child. We have seen God face to face, as it were, in Jesus Christ. We long to see him perfectly face to face in heaven. And we want to share this knowledge. We want to share this good news. And Our Lady, Queen of the Apostles, will help us to do so. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.